Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Adventures in Arcane Space. Once again, I am your Dungeon Master, All Dragon, and the players are... Hi, I'm David Big Matt Shepard. I play Braxton Miak, a human fighter from Recab's Wedge, an asteroid near Brow. Hi, everyone. I'm Daka Misama, and I play Solas Abebha, who is half elven cleric mage of Ogma. Hey, I'm James. I play Arkar, human paladin from Brawl. Hello, everyone. I, so, I'm so i Salem Mortar. I play Finalar Mahani, a druid from Grayspace. Hi, everyone. I'm Leva Lisa. Leva Lisa. Seshisa. That's a good start. Every one of us get it wrong. An elven wild mage. She doesn't know where from. Uh, hey there. I'm uh, Zakad. I play the character Lafto Mingle, a. Uh... An elven specialty priest of Erevan Ilisir, also known as a mischief maker. He's an occasional part time thief, so that makes him a multi class. His gimmick of being a mischief maker is coming out with fun titles because he's got to reinvent himself, you know. So his current title is a discreetly devoted duplicitous do gooder. Oh, wow, I actually got it right. Nice, nice, congratulations. Uh, so before we get in, uh, as a reminder, it is uh, September on Twitch. Uh, and uh, subs are uh, cheaper. We are currently working our way towards a sub point goal of 150 points. We are currently at 95. If we get to 150, I will play on stream Spelljammer Pirates of Realm Space. So if you want to see me suffer, if you enjoy that. What? what? I need to spread the word. Oh no. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you when you when you miss the streams and stuff. All right, so uh, last week we left off. Uh, actually, not last week. Two weeks ago. I'm sorry. Uh, we left off, and uh, the players had gotten a new mission. Uh, oh, actually, before we do that, uh, I should uh, mention rerolls. Um, so, if you want to give uh, rerolls to a player that they can uh, use. Uh, to try to give themselves a little bit of uh, extra insurance in certain situations. Uh, that is 500 bits, and uh, the player of your choice will get a reroll. Currently, Braxen has a 3, Finn has 1, Ocker has 3, Laftal has 1, Leva has 5, Solus has 1, I have 10. You were very quick. Many. <laughs> what, what? I'm sorry, I, no, no, I, 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 said, uh, I said how many I had. You, mm -hmm. you heard me Too right. Many. I have three. Oh, hang on, because I've got four written down on my. What are you just saying? Binary, yeah, you know. <laughs> I better change that down. I better change that down to three. Binary might sound uh, like I have even more. I don't know. All right, we left off uh, two weeks ago. The uh, party has uh, put in at a planet called uh, Limithar, uh, and they have gotten a new mission. There is an empire in this sphere uh, that uh, is a pretty major slaving operation, and they especially value elven slaves. Uh, but the uh, empress's, the current empress's illegitimate half-brother is actually a half-elf, and the elves of Linathar have uh, asked you to go break him out of the prison that he has been uh, secretly put into for many years. Mm -hmm. So there's been some time for you guys to uh, think about uh, um, how you want to go about it. Uh, you have uh, ample time to uh, ask uh, further questions and uh, try to get more recommendations if you want to try to get a better feel for how things are uh, going. Um, so I guess uh, first we'll start <laughs> off with uh, what you guys are, are thinking right now in terms of... Um, like what you what you kind of feel like you're gonna be going towards, going for, or something like that. Yeah, well, Solas is uh, suggesting that uh, we would pose as merchants, but uh, yeah, we that's would ask more one. questions about what kind of merchants the Elven Navy has witnessed going there and back. We'd have to go down to the marketplace and see what's selling, what's being imported, what's getting exported, and stuff. Well, I mean, the uh, Elven Imperial Navy might have some recommendations for you or something like that, so... Yeah, and uh, I think we should ask them. I'm, uh, I'm 
struggling to work out whether we can go in with a whole ship or whether we need to take the shuttle in instead. Um, I think I think Braxton might ask Nimeril to help him dig around and see if she can figure out whether we're likely to be stopped if we go in with the Battle Dolphin. Well, Nemeriel wouldn't have any special knowledge. No, I know she wouldn't. I'm not quarter master. I'm not quarter master. Doc master. I know she wouldn't, but I'm struggling. I'm struggling with the Elven reports to work out um, how much a threat the ships of this new power are if we fly in with a big ship. Okay, and so whether we're, likely, whether we're likely to have a place where we can land on a dry dock on the other side of the planet. All right, um, so, so um, you you spend the day kind of discussing it. Um, you you basically have uh, the the elves give you um, a contact that you can go to to uh, um, like talk to if you have questions to uh, help further your um, yeah uh, your goals, and also if you have a request of the elves uh, for assistance because they they have basically said that. Um, yeah, yeah. Like they will they Basically, will supply you with some help. stuff if that if it will help if it's reasonable kind of thing. Yeah. Um so uh and Laftel, uh yeah, you need to get your uh your catapults repaired. Um which will basically just run uh fifty gold pieces each. Uh and take a couple spare days. Spare metal or something. Oh yeah. Getting spare parts and, and stuff like that. Oh, what's that thing called? That flying plant thing you can attach to someone wearing like a parachute, like Gabawak or something? Uh, Gadabout. Gadabout. Is that something we could request? <laughs> Sounds like it'd be fun and useful. It's an excuse for laughter. Could uh, Gadabout allow us to fly into a volcano? They... The elves would, would be very uh, questioning of your request because... Um, yeah. That would indicate that uh, you are oh, yeah. in substantial contact with the Elven Imperial Navy because they do not sell those. They do yeah, not give those that's true. give those away. So I mean, they give them away. They do not sell them. Oh. Um, they don't give them away frequently. It's more of like a, a big reward kind of thing. No, I was just thinking because most of us can fly, and just that Braxton really can't. Braxton can fly uh, downwards very quickly. Wow, well, yeah, that's rather unfortunate. <laughs> so, um, yeah. like, what the elves will tell you is that uh, it's an extinct volcano. It's not like a, um, like if they had gotten word that you could just like crawl into the caldera and get into the prison, they would have already tried something like that. They would have okay. like teleported some some people on top and just gone in, but um, yeah. the fact that that they have not heard anything about that, like to them that that's like, uh, it wouldn't exactly be a very secure uh, prison if you could just climb up to the caldera top and go in. Yeah, uh, Sola suggests that uh, we take our ships. Uh in there uh, as a merchant then uh, basically land with the shuttle uh, on the other continent that is not under the empire's control and uh, from there uh, fl fly closer in uh, with flitter okay yeah are we so going to be able to approach so what the elves will tell you is that um the uh there is essentially a blockade if you are if you are going to if you're a merchant claiming to go to the other continent, then you know they're at war with them, and the other continent doesn't have any nations with spell jamming power. Um, the elves do enough that it like they they they've siphoned off enough ships that uh, the Talon Grand Empire can't do any sort of space based uh, invasion. But yeah. they have enough ships to act as blockades. So you'd have to do a blockade run, and that also means that you would not be able to leave your um, the the dolphin in orbit. Okay, yeah. so, so then we have to go into the Empire as a merchant. 
What's or you a... need to find some place that you can hide your ship uh, down on the yeah. surface kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so we can't easily hide the entire battle dolphin on the planet because it's not designed to land. What if we um, do a planet full? Like as then if we go down with softwood. Well, and how uh, do you get off? Well, someone would have to meet us at a given time, but we'd be dependent on, say, Lever sending a message that we're leaving. Um, mm. So that's yeah. doable. Um, what's, I mean, wasn't it everything on the inner map is hostile territory? Essentially. A... Like, that. that's where they're, they have uh, bases and they have uh, patrols and stuff like that. Here's the thought. Are there any planets that are ones that we can visit that are on the far side where we can claim that we're traveling through the middle to get to um, the other let's have a look at the map so um, Salfaria and uh, Hisperos are both uh, not under the control of the Talon Grand Empire so if you wanted to take your uh, the Battle Dolphin and leave them in one of those locations you could do yeah. so um, yeah. with greater success. We'll put it that way. Um, yeah. Hesperus has uh, a a rocky uh, ring around it, and there's a lot of dwarves there. They have There's a bunch of uh, dwarven citadels in there. Um, the Talongran Empire does make raids occasionally, but that doesn't... because there are, there are elves down on uh, Hesperus, snow elves. Um, yeah. But they kind of act as a a, a protection field. Um, That world itself doesn't do a whole lot. Like, the the, the dwarves aren't really getting involved, per se. Um, Yeah. Some individual ships and stuff like that. But they're kind of, like, neutral but nominally allied with the elves, is is what you'll pick up as the... uh, um, the, the general thing. So, uh, like, the elves would say that that um, if you go in there and you pay to dock your ship in one of the at one of the um, citadels, yeah, yeah, they got no problem with that. You know that that, right. that would work out pretty well for you. Uh, they might expect you to to uh, help out if uh, a raid happens or something like that. But yeah, yeah. Well, that sounds good. Um... I'm wondering if we're going to do anything like that, if if there would be anything that the Elven Navy would want that we could buy as a cover story, if we need to have a cover story. Or is there, is there um, are there guys called Talarians? Talarian. Talangran. Talangran Empire. Talangran, sorry. Uh, are there Talangran spies? There might be. Right. Yeah. What's happening what's happening with uh, Lanelius? Uh he's still giving his report right now. Uh. You know, posing as merchants, we don't necessarily have to have a cargo. We could be going to buy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we have plenty of money. Hmm. That tends to disappear very quickly of our history. <laughs> and you could use illusions to create the appearance of cargo, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it, a lot of it depends say on... That, like it's, well, uh... right, but I mean, even... Uh, there's always going to be the potential for discovery. We'll put it that way. No, mm. what I mean is... how. We did something at one point. What was it? Was the Le- um, Leoman's tiny hut or something to obscure when we went onto that Kryn moon on the flare? Yeah. Mm. We don't. I mean, that wasn't an illusion, but it was an obscurement. But uh, we do we even have illusions magic? Leva yeah, has some illusion spells. Some. Yeah. Does she? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Never seen I mean, them uh, often. She's no, she's she used them before. Yeah, yeah she has I used... Used to, she's used them quite. I used them quite a bit. 
One, uh, there was definitely one that uh, you used to make it appear like you had some uh, ship cargo at one point. I don't remember the exact situation, but I remember that. Mm. Right, it, was in, it was in green, if I remember correctly, when we were uh, trying to hunt the pirates. She looks at, La uh, at Laughter and goes, this is typical. <laughs> Maybe typical? Ugh. I think this is player discussion right now rather than character discussion. Anyway. Yeah. No, she okay. meant it as a character. I meant this as a character. <laughs> yeah. It's Leva. Leva looks at Love Tool. <laughs> okay. You guys want to fight. <laughs> um. Oh, and uh, Laugh Tool. So they can supply you with a very rough map that will get you to the um, the mountain. Um, yeah. and, and they also have, like, maps of where, like, major cities are and stuff like that, and, and basic shoreline. Uh, it's not going to provide you with detailed information, like, where they have, uh, military encampments and stuff like that. Um. If it's got topography and stuff, then we can get a lay of the land. General topography, or something. Yeah. So, so this volcano is... It's located in the middle of uh, like grassy plains, mm. like it's a it's an isolated uh, volcano, not yeah. part of a chain. Um, the the elves have no idea what you know, like like what its history is, other than um, it's clearly extinct. It's said to be extinct. They wouldn't have mm. built a a prison inside of it if it wasn't extinct. <laughs> yeah, um, I basically if... a single solitary mountain peak that has happens to be a volcano. Yeah, I will. I mean, I will do some inquiries to see if there's any. Uh, well, any members of the uh, Ralph Fire Cloak around? Uh there are. Because he's. Uh, uh, I figured that he would might have an idea of the volcano. They deal with earth and fire. He, he his um, his priesthood definitely would, but uh, his priesthood also um, like they're minor, most they're elves. Most elves don't even know that he exists anymore as a deity. So, not to say that he it's it, like you as a priest would have at least a vague idea of his existence, probably like a, a, a high level priest, but uh, um, most elves don't know anything about him anymore, kind of thing. Braxton will ask, or, or ask Muriel to ask if, if we're doing other things, um, if it's possible for us to get hold of some silk escape maps for the area so that we can hide them inside our clothing. Silk escape maps? Maps. Yeah. <laughs> A map sort of painted onto silk that you can roll up and like hide in the lining of your clothing, so that you'd have you to get, get that custom captured... made. You'd have to get that custom made. Okay, all right. And would... you'd probably have to get your clothing probably custom mo time. modified as well. Yeah. Well, Leva's well, no, still no, no, no. doing research, so if you need some extra time, that would help her get get finished. So. <laughs> Actually, I'm just wondering if the fabricate spell would sort that. Is it permanent? I don't yeah. know that you could make a map out of it. You could get like, I, I think you could make. <clears throat> Um, I mean, you can make things it... out of it, but I don't know if you can make it yeah. an actual map. Yeah. Or maybe a map made, made into some sort of form that we can hide. Um, well, they have no map. Some... Like, like the, the maps that they give you are the kind of thing that uh, would have been made uh, from memory of a fly-by right. survey or, or just the, yeah, the purchase just of, of publicly available maps kind of thing. So, like, right. you you do not have access to any anything secretive. So we're going to be probably relying on Finn to work out the best way to get in and out of the volcano area. Mm. I mean... Um, um, we can use the invisibility helm on uh, Flitter to do scouting flights. 
That's true. And, but... uh, once once we find a suitable location to land, flitter, and hide there, yeah. we can possibly use a few days on uh, on the ground scouting. Yeah, they may well be using spells to try to detect things in the sky. So we might have to be a bit cautious about that. Um, Any kind of magic tends to not be permanent. Yeah. And also detecting uh, things in the sky is... You would have to have a spell that have a really, really huge area of effect. Yeah. So I, th- I think, I think, um, well, we haven't voted on it, but I think we're looking at the best option is this dwarven planet. And then do we leave the battle dolphin there and go in with a dolphin shuttle? So the elves would the elves would highly recommend you go in with the uh, the shuttle because it is yeah. a um, it's less obvious. It's it's a, a standard groundling sailing vessel in appearance. Yeah. Um, unless people are very familiar with the battle dolphin uh, itself, um, they most yeah. people like if you saw a small. Uh, uh, a small sailing vessel. Yeah, you would have to make a shipwright check, a yeah. ship's carpenter check, or a shipwright check, to determine whether it was uh, part of uh, uh, like the uh, if it was a dolphin shuttle kind of thing or just a small sailing vessel. Yeah. So unless they're from you know, and again, like that's from uh. uh you know your your perspective as a um, yeah ha- as no, having this, this a, a battle dolphin. So a lot of other we, people are who have not never seen a battle dolphin are never going to even make yeah. that kind of connection. You're right. We don't actually have to land at the other continent. We can land in the sea. We can as long as we land somewhere that's relatively you know we don't want to get swamped by seawater. Um. Ah, are there any small islands that are uninhabited in the general area of this volcano? Certainly not in the general area of the volcano. You could also ask what their maritime uh, defences are like. Yeah. I mean... They uh, might just have an armada of generalised seabaring ships. Didn't the map indicate that the volcano is in the middle of uh, grassy plains? Yeah. Not right. near a sea. Okay. Yeah. So there, there's, you know, there's going to be rivers and streams and stuff uh, cutting through that area um, and stuff like that. Um, but generally, it's like, uh, so far as they know, um, it's mostly like, you know, there's farmland and graze land uh, surrounding it for many, many, many miles. How much overland flight are we um, talking about to get away from the volcano and over the sea? Hours. Hours. So we probably... Be, and and uh, how quick is it to get into world space? Uh, it's a size D world, so it would be a half an hour. Size D. Right, which is the sa- pretty much the same as the invisibility. So it seems like even if we land on the planet, we're probably better off going up and down. With the flitter. And so there, like, the there are some additional time. things that you could do. Um, yeah. Like, uh, you know, you don't have to just rely on the uh, uh, on the helm itself for disguise purposes. Yeah. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Is it possible to paint flitters without damaging the growing wings? Yeah. But so, you can also use like illusion magic too, so Yeah. I I wonder if we can uh yeah, illusion magic. Um anyone got illusion magic, how long can you make that last? Um would you be able to make the bottom of the flitter look like clouds? and the sky and that sort of thing. Uh, we talked about that before, and I think the result was yes. I'm just checking 
for how long? As I remember, it was quite some time. That might help then. So we get a bonus from that if, it, if, if you can do it. And then we get a bigger bonus from the invisibility. You know what? I've forgotten what the spell was called. <laughs> um, it depends on the, Spectral the level. Spectral Force, yeah. I think. Spectral Force, Phantasmal Force, uh, spells like that. She doesn't have Phantasmal Force. She has Spectral Force. Let me see. It's almost like this is a good opportunity to see if you could learn a, uh, an illusion spell for one of the wizards from the Elven Imperial Navy. She doesn't care about learning. She wants to learn the spell she's researching now, so shut up. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a special duration. Uh, she needs to concentrate on it, so she can't do anything else in that time. So it's a maximum. What did it? Uh, what did you say? Eight hours? She, no, she can't quite concentrate for eight hours, can she? Um. Hold. That would be the the absolute maximum for sure. Yeah, probably if you're doing meditation or something. Well, it won't take us eight hours to take off and land. Mm -mm. Uh, and it... the area of effect is a forty uh, forty feet cube plus ten feet cube uh, per level. Ten it would mean that's plenty. It of would mean it would mean you couldn't operate the helm if you was concentrating on a spell. Well, I could. It would just uh, it, it no. will last for three rounds after the concentration ceases, which which is not very long. But in, yeah. in an absolute pinch, it could. You cannot. You can't. Forget. You can't pilot the uh, ship uh, and concentrate on a spell at the same time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's why I'm saying it lasts for three rounds after concentration ceases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a good one because sand smell and thermal illusions are all included with it so if 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 we make it look like a, a, it will smell like a cloud okay it will <laughs> <laughs> if anyone feels like it it can it will smell like a cloud it will taste yeah like a cloud. but also also um if finn can identify a local bird you could make it a bird or something. As long as it's not something they want to eat. That would, that would have to be it's a very me. big bird. <laughs> 300 yeah. meter big uh, uh, swallow. How about that? Oh, like a hippogriff or something. They Why still don't have... Uh, they're still not the size of a... Uh, could it appear a, as a flock of birds? Yeah. So the, I... the issue is more along the lines of... Um, It is very difficult to use an illusion spell, a normal illusion spell, to make something disappear. Actually, like, disappear. Like, uh, and I'm not talking about a spell from the school of illusion phantasm. Obviously, there's, a, there's invisibility for that. But um, for a flock of birds, you'd have to make portions of the ship invisible, and that's not really something that... Uh, uh, Oh, I see. Illusion yeah, spells yeah, are go very on. good at. Yeah. Like, you can do a little bit, like, make someone appear smaller than they are, but uh, it, you're, you're the... It, it would, it would kind of give it away, uh, uh, it, or it has a better chance of giving it away, I should say, if you're mm -hmm. trying to make your, your thing look like a flock of birds kind of thing. I, oh. I can't imagine either that uh, a flock of birds would actually fly like a ship is uh, flying. Here's a thought. Do we know what spell jamming ships they use? Um, the ships that the uh, Talongrin Empire uses uh, are generally along the lines of uh, groundling sailing type vessels. They make heavy use of galleons in their fleets. Right. And the elves will tell you that they do have uh, some flagships that are um, basically oversized galleons. Yeah. That that pound for pound can stand up to a uh, uh, an elven armada. So maybe we could look the flitter, make the flitter look like one of their galleons. A miniature galleon. 
So you can change what your your illusion is on the fly. Like you don't have to set it and then and then that's yeah, it. As yeah. long as you're continuing to concentrate, you can change it. But keep in mind that if it goes from a cloud to a ship, eh, it's kind of obvious. Yeah. If <laughs> if if we flew around the back of a mountain and changed from a ship to a cloud, we might get away with it. But you don't know who's looking from what direction. Yeah. yeah what we would also have to pay attention to is clouds don't normally land on the grass. But yep. so basically you can I mean like you don't need to decide right now what you're going to make it appear like. Yeah. Like that's Yeah. That's we something know that the you spell can, will work. Yeah. Um At least you know that the spell can can change the appearance of your of the flitter. <laughs> We'll put it that way. Yeah. Whether it works or not is uh, related to other yeah. things. <laughs> Don't start laughing. I... <laughs> I always think bad things are going to happen when you laugh. Uh, question to Alt. Yeah. Uh, is there an absolute necessity to change the flitter? Or would it be easier to just change the people on board to, to look like what uh, what they are used to seeing? You they won't really know until places. you get there. Is is what I'll say. Because like it's um, uh, the the reason why I, like I don't want to get bogged down in deciding what you're gonna make the thing look like because you might want to like you will yeah. almost certainly reevaluate when you get there, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. So Are they our main. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say. So, like, just knowing that you can use the illu that the illusion spell will cover your ship is good enough, and you'll have the whole trip to discuss it. When you get there, you'll have ample time to think about it, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Our our main problem with a flitter is that the Elven Navy uses flitters. This lot of people will not have access to flitters. Well, so... we 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 want it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I know, I know. But basically, the flitter will, if they recognize the flitter as a flitter, they will know it's one of the ships that are enemies. So it's either some, it's either the elves or someone who's taken the ship from the elves. Mm. Um, I have a question to, 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 to uh, Finnell. Yes. How far away do you need to be to use uh, commune with nature? Uh, well, it gives me the entire area. Leading up but, to, uh, I think, but can, five can miles you, currently. Can you do it while we are still in the air? Or no. do you ne actually need to be on the ground? I would have to be on the ground. I have to be in contact with nature. Okay. Because okay. I thought we might use it as, to, as a sort of a navigation help. And, and that you could tell us from the air <laughs> where, where, where the where things are. I mean, if we are on the get into the orbit, uh, we can most likely descend to the level of clouds. Then, uh, then basically use illusion magic to make the ship turn into cloud uh, to spot a uh, spot suitable landing location where we can hide flitter uh, on the air and then just went, go invisible and land. Hmm. Yeah, will you be able to do your thing you did before, Finn, where you made it so that people couldn't find the flitter? Yeah, I can put up a whole sanatory forest. That sounds good. Um, or maybe we should check with their intel on what, what the terrain is like so you can find the best landing spot for us. I mean, if it's all... If it's all um, Flatland, then I don't know whether a hallucinatory forest would work there. Basically, you'll have to get in in close enough to get a good view of the area to know if that'll work or not. Right. Okay. And well, we in that case, always, I think... we Sorry, can go. always see if there's any larger crevasses or something like that on the mountain to hide in. Yeah. In that case, I think um, Finn's job is going to be um, to select the landing spot for us. It's closest where he can hide the ship. 
and then we've got to figure out whether we can get food from the land or whether we just take him supplies. Probably want to take supplies, but we might need to live off the land if we have trouble. Can the elves tell us about the terrain around the volcano? Uh, so far as I know, it's grassland. So um, they don't know exactly what's in the immediate vicinity, but they would tell you that they doubt that there's any close by farm. Uh, they don't know for sure, but it's more of a... If it were us and we were setting up a a secure prison inside a, a volcano, we would want to make sure that there's no farms, like, within 20 minutes walk of it. Kind of thing. Well, I'm more interested in forests than farms, but... Um, being grasslands, um, they they don't think that there's any significant forests. There may be small copses of trees. There might be some trees along uh, streams or rivers. Uh, there might be some trees on the mountain, but uh, they don't have a good idea um, of its density, and they, they can't really tell you whether, like, they can't give you enough information to know whether hallucinatory forest will work until you get there. We'll put it that way. Well, it'll always work. It's just a, a forest that suddenly appears would definitely be a little suspicious. Well, that's what that's yeah. what I mean. <laughs> whether whether it would work to dis to actually disguise uh, your location, we'll put it that way. Well, like I said, we don't necessarily have to look for forest if we can spot a place on the mountain we can land. Well, we could hide in the caldera. <laughs> I think we need to be a little bit away from the the volcano and walk there. I mean, it's a mountain. It's going to be a big thing. Yeah. Yeah, but they're probably going to have patrols on the mountain. The mountain's going to be rocky, isn't it? <laughs> so if we found a cave, we could fly into a cave. Uh, if there was something like a, a, a tunnel that used to be full of lava or whatever. So I'll tell you from a... a like a metagame perspective i'm not going to be like uh the only the absolute only place that you can go is uh, uh two days away kind of thing i'm not going to do that uh there, there's yeah. going to be places that you can go within a reasonable distance yeah but it's gonna like exactly where you want to go and exactly what you need to do to uh, hide yourself you're probably not going to really know until you get there so mm -hmm. like Right. You've got you've got Finn with uh, hallucinatory forest. So if there's forests around, you got that. Yeah. You may want to think of something if if you have to do a cave or uh, stay in the caldera yeah. or something like that, and just basically you know like make a couple contingencies and then see what what's yeah. around there when you get there. I think I think we got a net before. You definitely did some some like netting with the uh, um, brush. Yeah, and, I don't know if we like still that. got that. I don't know if we still got all that gear. It's easy enough to pick up that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, you'd still I'll have to get you. you'd still have to get local plant life because you wouldn't be able to take that. Yeah, but Finn would be able to help with that because we might even if we can uh, if we can move plants without killing them, we might even be able to keep them alive so that they look more realistic. And essentially bury the flitter in plants if we can't find a forest to hide it in. Um, uh, Solus, mm -hmm. your, your rabbit that digs holes, mm -hmm. can it dig a hole like the size of the long middle bit on the flitter if we want to sink sink the flitter into the ground a bit like a ditch uh, let me see i need to do a bit calculation on how much it can dig since i don't Adam. remember the dig spell out yeah, at the, on the top of my I'd head. Imagine if there are mounds about, we could just hollow out a mound with shape, uh, yeah, uh, stone and earth. Yeah, because I'm and, not saying we um, should do that because we'll have to adjust our plans. But it, it's, sure it's, uh, it might be an option. Well, again, until we're there, we're not going to know. 
Yeah, yeah. But yeah, having it as a okay, if we encounter like again, if we encounter a, a, a reasonably dense forest, hallucinatory forest, boom, that's that's you know the basic idea. If you encounter uh, lots of piles of dirt, maybe you can dig something using the 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 rabbit or you know, like just getting some real basic ideas of a couple different options uh, is a good idea. Just don't you don't need to detail them out in depth and also. Uh, don't get like super convoluted in in coming up with yeah, yeah, dozens yeah. and dozens of possibilities because only one only one is going to work okay. or only like yeah, yeah. you're going to choose one in the end so just just go for the basics. Um, your hallucinatory forest fin. Uh, I forget how long it took you to make it. If we were being chased, would you be able to just drop that behind us so that the people chasing us have to go through the forest to get to us? Uh, let me. I mean, if possible, we probably don't want to kill lots um, of these people. Yeah, I can actually cast that in a within a normal round. Awesome. Okay, so we do have a lot of options. I think it centers on me, though. So, right. Well, that's fine. As long as you're with us, you can make sure we don't get lost. No, actually, it doesn't. It, it just What's the range on it? Have... Um, range is 80 yards. Yeah, so you can cast it up to 80 yards away. Yep. Yeah, it says one of its edges can appear up to 80 yards away from the caster. How big is it? Um, at my level, 400 square feet. That's a lot. Yeah, so you could basically trap a bunch of people that were chasing us. That That's pretty useful. Okay. It might be useful for when we make our exit from the uh, yeah prison. Just drop it right at the entrance we go out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dig spell enables a caster to excavate 125 cubic feet of earth, sand, or mud, mud per round, and the rabbit works as 12th level uh, as 12th level wizard would. And its duration is one round per level, so that would be 12 times uh, one, 125 cubic feet. Oh, That's max. Um, but it's uh, yeah, earth, sand, or mud. If we if we check the area outside the prison, they might have a cemetery. Uh, I'm not going to be going digging up graves. Well, someone else might be able to dig the grave. No, I'm just thinking we might. Uh, we... I would not accept anyone going th digging up the graves. Why? You don't even know what I'm going to suggest. Yeah, not. Uh, you don't not, know what uh, I'm going to suggest. Not, not disturbing the dead is uh, something that uh, we can ask them to help. Advocate. Um. Anyway, if we if we find some dead prisoners and we ask them, uh if we thought of some questions to ask about the insides of the prison, we might just get some information about what's going on inside to work That's out how to escape. Typically beyond any of our power. Is it too late that they've been dead? I need to look at the duration of when it's a year. Oh, it's a year, is it? Okay. Well, no, I don't even know if I can do a year. Well, oh, back to the rabbit. I could, uh, I could help it a little bit too, because I can turn a decent amount of rock into mud that it could then dig out. Uh, important thing to remember, of course, is that the uh, material the rabbit digs uh, doesn't disappear into any anywhere. It's moving it, in other words. Yeah. So it's literally just digging. Not uh, not just making holes, but I mean, uh, but again, like uh, uh, rock to mud, 
-hmm. digging with that gives you some ideas. So you, you have some ideas yeah. there if you need to uh, <clears throat> okay. dig so, down and build up around and, and hide yourself that mm -hmm. way. Yeah. If, I, if I was to take a shovel and go behind the rabbit, how fast would I have to shovel Earth out of the way? <laughs> really fast. The thing digs very, very quickly. Uh, like I said, it can dig uh, 125 cubic feet in a round, so in a minute. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That's yeah. like an auger going to town. Yeah. On the earth. It's a, that's a lot of that's a lot of dirt being moved. In other words. Mm hmm. So basically, a cubic hole of five feet on each side. Um, you do have, uh, like, I, I'm okay with you having some control over the shape, because I mean, it's, again, it's not, it doesn't have to mm -hmm. be, with the rabbit, it does not have to be, uh, purely cubicle and, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's just easier to visualize it as. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, the spell, spell specifically says that you can, uh, in later rounds, start to basically create kind of a step steps down type of excavating. Steps rather than a slope. If be that specific. Yeah. If Oka was on riding Beermore through the air, would that be two invisible spells? Uh, yeah, you'd have to make uh, Bielmulf and Ocker invisible unless you had something that had an area of effect. I mean, invisibility 10 feet uh, radius. But then we had to stay within 10 feet of you at all times. I mean, uh, I'll just ride along. I'm not I'm sure, uh... sure, sure Bielmulf can support both of us. You just cast strength on Bielmulf. Did that work on... <laughs> Non-humans, uh, non-humans. I have no idea. I was just strength does uh, uh, like it, it. It will work. Whether it will have any in-game effect is a um, is a question. You can absolutely cast. You can cast strength on any any living creature, but also, I think it's, it is strength of radius, arms. Uh, so also uh, invisibility ten feet radius. Uh, uh, I don't have to cast it on myself. It's touch based spell. So I could cast it on you, and you and Beomulf would be invisible. Sure, that could work. That's a possibility. Mm -hmm. here's, here's what I'm wondering. Um, they might have air shafts into the prison up the mountain a bit. We might be able to lower ourselves into one of those. Um... So it um, might be might be worth someone searching above the entrance. I mean, uh, so I would recommend it that we look multiple potential uh, routes in in or out, since uh, the route we take in might not be the route we come out. Mm. Considering we are entering a hostile uh, base. Well, you'll probably want to figure it like at, at least try to figure out where. Mm. Um, all of the uh, potential like mm -hmm. uh, yeah. ventilation shafts yeah. are. I don't mind thing. saying yeah. this actually. Uh, it's something I would have done actually while I was getting a new holy symbol is that as a I would have transformed into some other creature and I would have observed the local marketplace if there was like any kind of like. Uh, underhanded trading that I would recognize as like thieves or something. Uh because it lasts for three have, hours. You have not been polymorph self lasts three hours? Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Um so you would not notice non thief underhanded trading. Because you're not you're not skilled in uh that kind of area. Um, this town does not have a significant thieves guild presence. Alright. So, like... Checking. It was something I would have done anyway, so... Yeah, like, there, there are thieves, there are pickpockets, there are, you know, 
scam artists and stuff like that, and you see that, but they're, they don't appear to be very organized. It's, it's very low level and, uh, uh, not particularly organized. Yeah, yeah most people just operating on their own or with one or two other people kind of thing. Mm. And you, you so notice, I mean, like, you, you would also pick out that, uh, uh, especially in the lower city, the, the, um, there's, there's a few, like, kind of proto thieves guilds where some people have staked out, you know, some, some groups of, uh, um, people have staked out territories and they, uh, they push out people who, you know, they, they catch working in the, in that area and stuff like that. But, uh, um, nothing quite fully organized into a full, full-fledged thieves guild yet. Uh, good. quick question out of interest. Mm-hmm. How rare creatures are, Mr. Dragon? Um, they're rare-ish. Uh, Since I noticed that there's uh, one spell that uses component of a drop of Mr. Mr. Dragon Spittle. Do you what? want us to get attacked by a dragon just so you can get some spittle from it? No, I'm just curious. It's a, it's the kind of thing that uh, um, some some merchants might trade in, um, but it is I, certainly I not easy to get. Yeah, since I don't remember hearing about Mister Dragon. You know, not it's super also rare. also its alternative uh, material component is way way more easier to get. Uh, yeah, get I don't think you need to worry about that then. <laughs> It, you know, it was just curiosity. If you'd have served dinner to our guest in the Flodgeston, you could have collected lots of spittle off the plates. That would have been a different... Yeah, but uh, it wasn't Mr. Dragon. <laughs> it's specifically a Mr. Dragon that is mentioned in here. Okay. All right, Not so... Not just dragon. Um, what do you guys... Like, um... What is, kind of is everyone okay with us flying into the dragon, uh, the dwarven <laughs> planet, as our first move? And then yeah, uh, I think that would be a prudent first step. Since, uh, if nothing else, we can ask the dwarves if they have any more intel intel about the uh, space around the planet. Yeah, and then we're going to have to do a blockade run with our with our uh, dolphin shuttle while we uh, say that we're delivering stuff. Uh, what kind of merchants do fly in uh, to the inner uh, sphere? So, um, it, it depends on uh, where you're talking. If they're, if they're, they're going into the, um, the eastern lands, uh, where the Talon Grand Empire has been, like, uh, attacking and stuff like that, then you're you're talking mostly about smugglers. Um, so they would, you know, uh, anything that's that's generally high value that might be of interest to people who are at war with a uh, with uh, an invading empire kind of thing. <clears throat> um, those go into the Talongran Empire. Um, the most popular uh, are organizations like the Smiths uh, pardon me Smiths Coster uh, mm. bringing in weapons um, they have a very there's a very very big market for uh, wheelock pistols arquebuses and smoke powder and bombards um, but at the same time since they're actually open for trade uh if you're claiming to go to the Talongrand Empire, then just about anything that makes sense would work. So, could be food, mm. could be uh, fine products from out of sphere, could be products from elsewhere in the sphere. Um, you know, spices, cloth, silk, uh, mm. glassware, uh, ceramics, you know. Basically anything that you can think of. Uh, 
Does does Glau know planetology enough to uh, help us work out when to land so that we can come down where the volcano is at night time? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, if you want, like, I mean, if you want to come down at night time, that's, you know, the worst case scenario is that you're just waiting around for night time to come around kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you specifically want to get to the planet at nighttime, um, that would be a bit more difficult, and I would have to make him make a check, just because, like... Yeah, uh, well, I'm guessing... If it was a planet that he knew, it would yeah. be a lot easier. I'm, I'm guessing we would, like, have to go here on the far side of the sun and come in from that side and then try and... Sorry, if you pinged, I was not looking. Oh, sorry, I was pinging further out from the planet. Yeah. Basically basically in the shadow from the sun, rather than a direct course. Well, and I then, mean, it doesn't really matter. You just go around the planet. Happening. Like, it, it, it doesn't matter if you come in from the, uh, um, the sun, as long as the place that you're going to is in nighttime. You just go around the planet. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, I'm just thinking in this blockade. So, so, um, well, they still have to catch you. They still have to catch us. Yeah. So, probably the easiest thing is we say we're going to Talam. Uh, we, we say we're going to their empire if we get stopped by anyone and we have some stuff to show them. And then when we land, we just don't go there. And, uh, if, if we get spotted at all, we just say we're going to trouble. I mean, uh, one thing that uh, we might do is uh, pose as weapons merchants uh, on the patrols that might encounter us before we yeah. go to yeah. the planet. And then uh, instead of uh, going to Talarn Empire, we smuggle <coughs> them to the elves that need weapons. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a possibility. That could be, uh, that could be a secondary objective. Um, but... Uh, I think we will be giving away weapons <laughs> rather than selling them. Most people who tend to profiteer off that kind of work play both sides. They don't stick to one or the other. Yeah, yeah. But if you're doing it open, like if you're if you're claiming to be an open trader, then uh, you absolutely would be claiming to be going to the Talarn, uh, Talon Grand Empire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we could find out what sort of things the elves think the rebels need, and if we need to uh, say not cargo, rebels, but uh, defending kingdoms, defending kingdoms, yeah. But we're supposed to take this guy off world, aren't we? Yeah, I mean the so, like once you get him free, the the elves would be like their their recommendation, and it's entirely yeah. up to you, um, but. Their recommendation is get the heck out of there ASAP and get him mm -hmm. back to us so that we can start planning from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, the, I think the information about the special prison being broken into will be quite alarming for the leaders of the Empire. Yeah, I think I think then we're going to have nothing to do with the uh, the the other nations. Well, Leber would, wouldn't mind freeing all of them that are in there. The problem is, if we go in with a flitter, we can't. We can get them out of prison. Also, um, also we know that the prison also houses uh, legitimate uh, violent criminals like murderers and... Yeah, they, they, they'd help us indirectly. We take out the one we are supposed to. We let everybody else out, and uh, they can uh, deal with it uh, themselves. It wouldn't be a good act to free prisoners, knowing that there is a chance that you will be freeing a murderer. Especially if it's a murderer that then goes on and murders other innocents. Well, well Labour uh, would think it that way. If there's a chance of freeing some slaves with the murderers, she'd be quite happy to free murderers. 
if 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 the slaves are end up free. I don't think sl- there's that many slaves in the maximum security prison. And most of the time, it would just be elves, so it'd be pretty straightforward which ones are slaves does, and which ones are not, more often than not. Does anyone have any knowledge of prisons? Are they likely to have an office where they have information about the prisoners? The elves would tell you that they don't. The, the elves would tell you that they don't know for sure. But uh, if they were running a prison like this, they would yeah. absolutely have uh, records of the prisoners there. Because uh, mm-hmm. we're we're going to need to find our prisoner, right? So our our initial our initial our primary objective is to to, to get that guy. I mean, yeah. uh, the you... most likely is uh, warden's office. Yeah, so if we get in the so, warden's office, our primary objective is to work out where our guy is. Our secondary objective is to find anyone useful, and it, if we can break them out at the same time, we do. If there's a small enough number that we can take them on the flitter, we can do. Um, if there are lots of people, then it would come down to, is there a spell jamming ship there that we can steal? If there's a spell jamming ship there that we can steal then we could get them on there and one person can fly them out. I mean, like, you can also address some of this when you get more information about the layout of the prison. Yeah. Because you don't know how it's, it's set up inside. You don't know how easy it is to get out one person, yeah. let alone all of them. Yeah. Um, and like if you go in and let's just say you decide to do a frontal assault and wipe out the entire you know, guards and garrison and everything like that. Um, what happens to all of the other prisoners, you know, if you if you take out all of the guards and then just grab the one guy and leave, you know, you, you may need yeah. to consider that. You know, I mean, just saying, like, wait until you get there to make those decisions. You can have some ideas on, on, on how yeah. you feel overall going into it, but, but without knowing what the layout of the interior of the prison is or, or how it works or anything like that, you know, or even, like, you know, if there's some sort of uh, exercise area that prisoners go to, you know, you may have to get a group of them to get the one guy. You know, if yeah. he if he goes to exercise with, like, three or four other prisoners, and that's when you decide it's the best time to get him kind of thing. You know, you don't, you don't know these things until you get there. So I would say don't worry about it, about that part, until you get there and get a feel for what the layout is and, and how you have to figure out who you know, where he is, what cell he's in or whatever, Mm. that kind of thing. I think the one thing that where we might need to make that sort of decision is if he has any associates that were arrested with him and he is really wanting to keep them with him. Like if he's, if he's married or anything. Well, he wasn't, the the elves can tell you that he was not married when uh, he disappeared. Yeah. Um, and it was widely reported that he was killed. Uh, it was used as like a, um, you know, to to increase morale in their their fights and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, that alone, right there, like if you you rescue him, like the elves are like, we're gonna get him out. We're gonna be able to tell the people of the empire that uh, um, they were all lied to, and. Because of that and blah 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 other stuff, he's he's really the one who should be legitimately ruling, and that's why you should support. Yeah. Him. Like that's that's the impression that you get from the elves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Now he may have aides. He may have had friends, uh, stuff like that. Um, the uh, the you know again, you're not going to know that until you get there. Mm. So I, I would say don't worry about that stuff until you you can get more information when you get there. Okay. Anyone think it's worth us getting weapons? 
I don't think it's worth us getting weapons for people. We could maybe look to see if there's any uh, ship weapons. Oh, elves generally are... Sorry, I broke up. Elves are generally good with bows, arrows, longsword, short swords. Yeah, but we're not going to be able to drop off any weapons after we get the guy. We're going to leave the planet straight away. So, um... It, the elves would be willing to lend you some stuff if you feel that it would be necessary for uh, your cover. Right. Like, uh, if you're like, you know, here's... Yeah, yeah, all of those are crates of silk. Here's a sample, you know, and you have the illusions on these other crates, and then you pull out some real yeah. things as a sample. Um, mm -hmm. If there's something like that, if you want to do that with weapons, if you want to do that with uh, uh, spices or, or silk or other goods, glassware, um, they will lend you some of that. Depending on what it is, you, you might want to buy it yourself. Uh, depending on what exactly you want to masquerade as. If it's very expensive stuff that the elves have access to, they will lend it to you with the assumption that you're going to bring it back to them. Yeah, and we have do to pay for it. Have a, do the elves have any contacts uh, on the Elven Kingdoms? That, uh, yeah, but like not... Us, us to deliver any resources? Uh, not well enough that they could anticipate anything like that, and uh, the elven, like, one of the reasons why um, the elves got uh, involved so late, the, the, the elven imperial navy got involved so late, all of the elven nations in, um, on that world are interior. Okay. Mm. So they, um, like, they weren't able to like there, there wasn't much uh, uh, knowledge about what the uh, Talon Grand Empire was doing, um, you know, like immediately, kind of thing, because the Elven Imperial, the Elven Kingdoms there are were interior, and they were not, and still have not been, uh, getting the brunt of the attacks. Here is a suggestion, uh, Finn. I've just thought of. I know. You, are you? Are you about? Uh, I, don't know. I think he said that he was stepping Given away. Given the source, oh, I'm okay. inclined to say no right off the bat, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just thinking because of volcanoes and underground, would your uh, Efreet might be an expert in this field. Obviously, there's a whole rigor mortis attached with that, but something to think about. Rigmarole. Yeah, rigmarole. Rigor mortis is slightly I was different. Wondering. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. 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 I it could apply yeah. if it goes badly, but <laughs> let's not worry about that right now. Yeah. Okay, I don't think we're going to be having anything to do with the other continent unless we have trouble landing anywhere near the volcano. Um, I think really we're going to be focusing on finding a space to land, so. Uh, I think our one unresolved thing now is we're going to leave the Battle Dolphin at the Dwarven docks. Then we're going to go in with the Dolphin Shuttle and we're going to split off from the Dolphin Shuttle at some point. So what are we going to do with the Dolphin Shuttle? If we leave it in orbit, it might get stopped by um, patrols from the world so we might need a place to park it in the sea or in an island or somewhere and then we have to find a way to get back to link up with them um is there any lakes on this continent that has a volcano uh there are lakes but the empire controls the uh functionally controls the whole continent. Yeah. Like, there there are regions that they don't have great control over. Yeah. Right. Um, but, like, there are still bandits, there are still humanoid presences yeah. and stuff like that, but um, not... <clears throat> the elves don't have enough information about where any of those might be, so you, you'd All have right. to, like, make educated guesses or, or use some magic from uh, orbit yeah. or something like that. It sounds like we need to put the dolphin shuttle somewhere else. And that's my thing that I'm sticking at at the moment. Where do we put the dolphin shuttle? 
All right. So, um, what, like, you can ask uh, the elves for more information if there's. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, what, that's going to be. What do you is... want, uh, recommendation wise, from them, kind of thing? This this is going to be um, what what Braxton's asking you, Mirror, to help him with. He'll be looking at charts and stuff of whatever maps they've got on the planet, trying to work out. <clears throat> What what he's basically working at, out is we're basically breaking up into three groups. We're leaving most of the ship at, at the dwarven planet, and then we need to leave most of our dolphin shuttle crew somewhere, which is going to be our secondary base, and then our final our final base is where we go with the flitter. Um, so it's that last splitting up and coming back together that I'm. I'm not sure on yet. Okay. So where is there? Where is there? Um, are there any uninhabited islands? Uh, places that are slightly hostile that people won't go that won't get so, off. So the elves won't... don't know about uh, any islands out in the ocean. That doesn't mean that there aren't any. They don't know. Um, yeah. They, they have not done a survey of those islands. Uh, there are islands out there. Not many. Uh, it is a very big expanse of uh, ocean, and what islands there are are not good for s as stopping off points between the two continents. So we come back to the idea of landing at a port on well, the other continent. Well, so what this number one, what that means is that if you do f see an island that feels uh, suitable to you, yeah, um, it would be less likely, you know, your ship, you, the, the Dolphin Shuttle would be less likely to be spotted there, depending on what type of island it yeah. is. Because, yeah. um, like, basically, when the Talangran Empire is uh, sending over ships to attack the uh, eastern lands, um, they just have to go straight. They cannot stop along the way at a, an island base yeah. or something like that, because yeah. there just aren't any that are convenient for that kind of trip. Is this volcano on the side of the continent that's closest to the enemy continent, or the friendly continent in our case, or is it in the middle or on the other side? Middle-ish. It's uh, not particularly like it's not particularly close to the the shore in any direction. Yeah. Um. So like. Uh, uh, for a flying spelljammer vessel, uh, assuming there's no weather that that causes any issues, um, it's hours of travel. Yeah. Uh, last last question. There wasn't well, any moon for on. that long, was it? There Sorry. is a moon. There is a moon. I was I was going to get that. Um, there's also the Arctic. There are uh, yeah, like there there are ice caps. Uh, the Arctic and uh, Antarctic. There are ice caps. Um, Ice flows there, you know, there are places to, to go up there. Again, if you just want the ship to not be noticed, something yeah. like that might work. Uh, yeah. Again, a lot of this comes down to other, you know, other things and, and what you want to do, and, and there's going to be some luck. Uh, Talarn does have a moon. It does have a breathable atmosphere. It has no native life. Um, it is... Uh, not pleasant to breathe that moon, and it has no uh, standing water, so far as they know. Okay. They know that the Ta that the Talangran Empire has some mining bases up there. They don't know much about yeah. that, about those okay. places beyond that. I think we can write off uh, the moon then. Quick question. Mm -hmm. So, as for preparation to this uh, operation, would uh, inquire if there's uh, any wizard. There, who could teach him Evard's black tentacles? Uh, let me see. It's fourth level spell. No. Ah. Uh. I mean, just on a on a quick check, like with the Elven Imperial Navy. Uh, if you want to spend a few days uh, asking around town, uh, I'll do another roll. But uh, quick uh, check. Solas would, uh, if we spend any any days in the port, Solas would uh, try to find him, someone to teach that spell. All right. Well, I mean, we can. 
address that depending on on what the party decides to do. Um, so okay. like again, uh, like you can also put the put your ship into uh, a port on the eastern continent. It would be further yeah. away from you. Um, from where where you'd be, but you're not gonna get you're not gonna get the uh, shuttle like close by. In yeah, any, yeah, in yeah. any case. I, um, I suppose the advantage of putting the shuttle in a port is that when we escape from the prison, we need to navigate to the shuttle. So send if them, we try hiding a it, message to come to yeah, you and meet you someplace yeah, or something like that. Yeah, exactly. If we try hiding in hiding it in the Arctic or something, we have to find it. <clears throat> um Lever, your 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 thing for communicating with people, how quick is that? Can you do it while running? You can't cast any spells while actually physically running. Alright. Um if we were on the move and we, we, we pull somewhere. <clears throat> What's the casting time on sending is uh, I think what he's asking. One turn. It's not very quick. Right. So that's basically we need to camp somewhere for a while um, for you to be able to do that. If we know that the other person doesn't move, there are other spells that can be used. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me have a quick look. I do have something. What is it? While you're looking that up, I do want to mention that uh, um, any, uh, like, leaving your ship at a port on the eastern continent uh, would then have to deal with uh, a potential, like, if um, Talongran uh, happens to attack that port, yeah, then they're at risk just from either having to join in, friendly fire, uh, being yeah. captured... If the Talongrand decides to blockade that port, you know, there, you've got a lot of um, things like that that might happen too. Again, there's a lot of ports, probably low prior, low chance of it, but it is not something that you can, yeah, you know, something to, hmm. to consider. So, what you asked, uh, there's something called Whispering Wind. It's uh, it's one mile per level. Should that be enough? What do you think, old? Not if you've left the ship in, uh, like, no, that would not, that would not get to, uh, your, your, the Dolphin shuttle in any sort of other port kind of thing. They'd have to be pretty close by. Mm -hmm. You're looking at 11 miles. miles. Your, your, your ship is not going to be 11 miles away from you. Yeah. Okay. In that case, okay. let me see if we... that this is the one I was thinking of. Isn't there another one where you can sort of send something there's multiple spells for it they all operate in different ways though mm -hmm. depends on what you want nah. the, 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 no it's it's okay i think uh, it was done with these two one and one takes a long time and one is not fine it's too far so that's okay so uh, if we go for sending then uh, we have to stop for 10 what is it 10 minutes yeah basically one turn yeah mm -hmm. yeah um can she do that on the flitter while the flitter's moving if she's not if the flitter is on... pretty stable uh if it's being buffeted by weather if it is being attacked no yeah And uh, to Laftel's question, it can be done with the fly spell, but you can only move at a movement rate of three with the fly spell uh, while casting. So, yeah, it's very very slow. I, I think I would be comfortable with the, uh, the this this thing with the risk of the ports. I think I would be comfortable, which it sounds like we can't find it until we get there. If we had a landmark, uh, as in an island or something or the thing near the poles where we know we can put the uh, the shuttle so that we know that's where we go with the flitter. Um, but it seems like we don't 
have that at the moment. So we're going to have to work that out when we get there, I think. Yeah, I mean, you, you wouldn't know about landmarks in uh, most areas until you yeah. get there and can survey it. And uh, I don't think Glau's a planetologist. Nope. Is it worth us hiring a planetologist? You'd um, have to pay a lot because you'd be putting them in a lot of danger. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. I don't suppose there's a book <laughs> I could buy <laughs> no. to le learn planetology. I mean, um, there there are there are books that you could buy and learn it, but it's, it wouldn't help you in the short term like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess we've got like it. It feels to me we've got ninety percent of the plan, and ten percent is going to be gumption. Okay. Um. So you're you're thinking of uh, masquerading as a merchant, correct? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay, so what do you if, want to get to, like, if you're stopped, you should have a sample of the goods. If we're sure. going to have cargo, I think, I personally think, um, but I'll, I'm open to everyone else because um, other people might have stuff we need. I personally think we should try to buy weapons that work on our ship. And that way, if we get into a fight, we can use those weapons to defend themselves. You know, like um, like a uh, magical shot sort of stuff. And if we do have someone come on board and they see that we've got dust shot or whatever, that then that verifies the, the story. But also, if we have a fight with them, we show them we showed them it a, a different way because <laughs> we might need to fight our way out so i i think something like that would help well um, one like if 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 you're at a point where you're actually showing uh and it, like a uh, um sample cargo yeah uh they pulled up alongside you your ship weapons are useless in that case situation oh i anyway. i understand that I understand that. What I mean is we might do that going in and then going out, we might be using the same weapons to shoot at anyone that's chasing us. So I think that a cargo that we can actually use in a practical sense would be doubly useful. Whereas if we take in a load of fake silk dresses or something, um, that that's essentially useless as, uh, as when we're fighting a way out. Anyone got any thoughts on that? Is there anything anyone needs for other stuff? Like spell components? Sounds anyone? like a no. Anyone have any ideas? Uh, uh, anyone prefers something else to masquerade as having cargo of? I'm sorry, what, we, what was uh, Braxton's idea to masquerade as cargo? My idea... My... Well, my idea was if we take stuff to pretend we're tr going to trade it when we've got no intention of trading it, we buy ballista bolts, catapult shots, stuff like that that we can use in a fight. Yeah. And then that I'll way, that. That way when we're coming out and our cover's blown, we've got ammunition. How much do they cost? Ammunition is pretty cheap, but that also means that you wouldn't be making m much money. Like, um, the yeah, the problem with uh, uh, I mean, if you're if you're getting magical shot, that's that's different. Um, yeah. If you're getting normal non-magical stuff, all that stuff is extremely easy to make. Right. Fair enough. Uh, so importing it would not be profitable. Uh, the stuff that is yeah. profitable um, is either complex things, like uh, if you had um, non-magical ballistas or catapults that were unusual in design kind of thing. Mm. Um, the heavy types, heavy catapults, heavy ballistas, um, they, they take a lot of uh, um, effort to, like time and effort to actually manufacture. So those would be, uh, you could still make uh, a, a bit of profit on that. Um, if you had anything unusual in that, then that would be something as well. 
uh, bombards uh, and other smoke powder weapons, as well as smoke powder itself. Um, that's basically always profitable because uh, manufacturing time and precision and stuff like that is uh, like that's it's a lot of time to go into that, and just buying it is easier oftentimes. Mm -hmm. um, so smoke powder then. Smoke powder and smoke powder weapons, um, or like magical equipment. Like if you wanted to get mage yeah. shot or uh, helm seekers, uh, helm seeker ammo, that kind of thing. Yeah. But you're looking at an expensive outlay unless you're borrowing it. Yeah. Which, if you're borrowing anything from the elves, and uh, they'll they'll they're they're open to it, but. Um, you're also yeah. on the hook for using any of it. You got to pay them back. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Um, see, if we bought barrels of smoke powder, we could just have loads of barrels, and we could buy some barrels of smoke powder for us that we can show people if we get inspections, and we can just have loads of empty barrels or barrels of other stuff. Or illusionary barrows, barrels. They might not hold up very well to inspections. Well, people aren't going to be messing about near a barrel of smoke powder because they don't want it to blow up. Well, what? else would you think of taking? I'm thinking of how they live and uh, people in such uh, remote areas, they probably like alcohol, they probably like uh, special food because they never have access to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I would be thinking of. Yeah. Well, we could certainly take stuff like that. If we get spices and stuff, we can eat them later. I mean, yeah, we just, can just... just buy a couple tons of spices and we can eat them later. Well. So that means we wouldn't be weapons dealers. We'd be... Uh... Weapon and spice dealers. Well, uh, yeah, the elves did say that as long as we are uh, have a, have a cargo that is uh, actually valuable to trade, yeah. uh, it wouldn't uh, raise any questions. Yeah. Question to old. Yep. How? What do you think about the cargo of uh, alcohol and uh, and spices or just plain food that uh, they probably don't have access to while they're there? I mean, I think you should just come up you should just decide on something i mean i'm not gonna yeah uh, like ultimately <laughs> like uh, again a lot of it's going to come down to your role playing and uh what else you want to do with it like um uh, the the elves will not lend you perishables so if you're going with spices yeah. you're buying spices um yeah if you want silk you know they can get you some uh you know so it just that's kind of uh, you know I'm not going to make a recommendation to you because okay. it's it's your decision and it's up to your role playing to <laughs> you know for it to come out well or not. Um, well, and but it's also like up to you know kind of the the ancillary uh, points of view of do you want to have something that you can use. Uh, additionally, do you want to have something that you can sell later and recoup yeah. some money? You know, like, or do you just not care? You know. Mm -hmm. So th that's that's uh, entirely up to you. Well, Lara has the additional thought that if we were to use alcohol and we'd invite people for tasting, uh, then we might be able to spike it, or we might be able to spike the the alcohol that we actually deliver if they want to pre-taste it. Yeah, well, we're, we're not actually going to be selling any of this unless somebody stopping us demands to buy some. Well, that's okay. 
if we yeah. if we take let's say loads of wine and uh, and we invite them because it's a good wine and they decide that yes it's very good and they'd like to buy it and they f uh, they pass it out during dinner and everybody falls asleep then uh, it makes our work a lot easier well what we speak it with but we speak it with uh, the stuff that then I'll try to use on a dragon that double has that might work. Uh, I'd have to look to yes. see if that could be uh, how well that would be in integrated to like wine or, or ale or beer or whatever you decided to get. I'd probably, because I wouldn't exactly be okay with us using poisons or anything that I can live. Yeah, I mean, um, you would be okay with, with something that puts people to sleep. Uh, but yeah. not to kill them, kind of thing. That's that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that sounds about right. Because anyone that stops us is not really going to be our enemy. We're just trying to evade them. Well, they were was talking about sleeping, not about dying. I oh, know. I was just trying to clarify. La yeah. Okay, laughed all. Did did you have something like that? And Finn, would your tea powder? Leaves uh, work in wine. That would probably have to be tested. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Uh, one thing I would say, if we're going to buy stuff like that, is we kind of need to sell it when we get back to Brow to try and make make back some money. Wonderful wine, spiked with uh, sleeping powder. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, no, I, again, if you're if you're getting um, wine or beer or uh, some other sort of uh, alcohol or spirits, um, you're not going to be getting bottom shelf stuff. You're not going to be getting the cheap stuff because that's not profitable. You'd be looking at yes, mm -hmm. uh, yes. elven wines. You'd be looking mm -hmm. at like the the real high yeah. quality stuff. So that yes. is you, you are looking even even to get a sample. You're looking at a lot of expense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm aware of that because okay. otherwise it's not worth bringing it anyway because the cheap stuff they will probably have there already. Right. Or equivalents. Mm -hmm. Is there anything on Hisparis that we can buy there that's better than what we can buy out with the elves? No. Well, right. it depends on what you want. <laughs> like, in yeah. terms of alcohol, no. You mean Dwarven alcohol isn't better than uh, Elven alcohol? Uh, you would you would want to find a, uh, a like an actual Dwarven world um, with a whole bunch of citadels around, like, and not a whole lot of uh, arable land. They don't have. They don't have the the uh, ability to produce the high quality stuff. Like it's not just dwarven ale that you'd be getting. You'd be getting like, you know, the creme de la creme of dwarven ale for this place, mm. for that place, kind of thing. And um, when you're talking about citadels, they're making they're making the the basic standard stuff. Not nothing special. Yeah. But th don't don't we? Don't we have the uh, special homemade uh, ho uh, brewed um, beer that nobody else has? Made especially by Solas? Solas special brew. Uh, not, not in those quantities. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we still have some magic items that we haven't sold off? Because that can be our cargo. Our fake cargo, including some spare stuff we've got that we're not going to sell off that we're keeping. That's our personal stuff. We can just say this stuff is part of the stuff we're selling. Like, um, I think Hocker's got that um, that sword he was going to lend me, the dragon slaying sword. We can just say we're going to sell that when we get to the planet, for example. We don't sell it, but we can say we're going to sell it. 
<clears throat> oh, who's keeping track of uh, party items? Items that haven't oh, been distributed yet. Or where do you have that? We got so... a suit of mail, we got a spear, we got a warhammer. Yeah, so we got we... some stuff. Got a saber. Uh pretty sure you didn't we get rid of that dark iron wood spear? Down of a green metal uh, tangler and it... As a combat defensive and can deflect attacks, I'm pretty sure we got rid of that. Need to be? Oh, it's still on there. If not, then we've still got it. Uh, when, and when did we get rid of it? You... Well, no, I'm just. I might be thinking that's the one that Braxton had, which was the innovation draining one. And if they're different things, then they are different things, and we've still got this one. Yeah, I I think you're. Thinking of a different weapon. Yeah, and um, uh, basically various things that I still need to do stone carving with, but it takes such a long time for me to do to make it profitable. That is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Brexit. And we've got that it. book to distribute out at some point. Yeah, but what I'm saying is those things can be things we've got all this stuff to sell. Yeah, we don't sell it. We just have stuff we can say we can sell. And uh, like you've got all the books in the library. We could say we're selling some of those. So, <laughs> right. But so keep what in mind that... this reaction to that? <laughs> keep in mind that anything that you uh, are going to pretend to sell, even if you plan to keep it, uh, you need to get, like, cases for it. Crates, yeah. uh, cases, like, if you're talking about magic items, then you want, like, uh, uh, boxes that they would be resting on, like, yeah. felt or silk or, or velvet or something like that, you know, and be like, yeah. you know, you, you, you open up the lid and you're like, you know, see this fine spear produced by the dwarves of Angmar. 400 yeah. years ago, you know, you, you do your, your spiel on it kind of thing. Um, yeah. You know, so if that's what you're going to go with, that's what you want to uh, get some some stuff for. Get some crates. Okay, we'll ask if we can borrow some crates, I think. N right, but no, I mean, you need to get, like, custom-made... The, the boxes don't have to be custom-made, but you need, like custom-made inserts to, to rest these things on, because yeah, you're talking about yeah. magic items. You're not talking about just, you know, a barrel of uh, crossbow bolts or a barrel of uh, basic swords, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you would have to be able to present them in an extremely favorable way. Right, because, again, like, you're not... You're not... You're not... These would not be mass-produced items. They're not like, you know, you open up a crate and you have nicely organized uh, arquebuses or wheel lock pistols or crossbows or something like that. You'd be opening mm. up a, uh, a a crate or a case and there's the one item there resting because this is, it's a magical weapon. It is incredibly valuable right, on yeah, in its right. own, just on its on its own. Kind of thing. Uh, left, Ella. Mm-hmm. Do we still have a uh, unsold jewelry? Not really. We have gems. Uh, uh, does anyone have the ability to make non-magical things look magical? <laughs> that was that, that first level spell that does that. Do you know how to do that? No. Which one? Nystal's magical aura. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Braxton probably doesn't know it. It's no, but again, spell. like when you're when you're when you're yeah. planning stuff out, like yeah, if you're not speaking in character, you can just say, "Does anyone yeah, have yeah. Nysol's magical aura?" kind of thing. Yeah, if you um, know what the spell is, I, c because we could basically get a bunch of mundane stuff, including stuff we've already got, like catapult show, and we can put enchantments, fake enchantments, on a lot of it. 
so that they come on. If they do detect magic, there's a ton of magical stuff. Yeah, but uh, we would still have to get the uh, fantasy silk and satin made, such which would cost quite a lot of money. So in that we got to do that case, bit anyway. So in in that case, we we might as well basically buy something that we can then uh, sell on again to coop the loss. Instead of just uh, buying uh, those fancy uh, silk inlays for uh, weapon cases uh, and uh, then just uh, basically not getting money back. Well, next year, next time we buy a magical shot, we need to keep the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, magical uh, shot and magical ammunition and stuff like that would be a little bit of a different situation. Also, in its presentation, so just also most of the magic weapons that we have are uh, something that we have found. Speaking of, are there any on sale? Any magical stuff? Uh, siege weaponry, you know, shit weapon. How about we focus on the plans first, and then we can focus on on like what you actually want to buy for yourself? Yeah, because I don't want to get distracted. Yeah. Like, I, I, no, again, we, like uh, you, you I, just I, I need to the... decide what you want to pretend you're carrying. I, I'm yeah, like... I, I, I think I think we should just buy something uh, that is uh, valuable, like uh, spices or something like that, that we can then sell on. Spices, yeah, spices, spices or alcohol have... or. I'd say shipbuilding stuff. Shipbuilding stuff won't be worth a lot. Wood. No, yeah, but I'm pretty uh, do, sure they do, would appreciate that kind of stuff if do, you're trying to smuggle yeah, it in. Do, do consider it's, that they the, have a whole continent's worth of... It's a growling mm. world. They've got their own trees. You just pay some dude with an axe to chop them down. <clears throat> um, I mean, things like a spyglass they will be interested in. And we're probably going to need to take the spyglass in anyway. Uh, in order to check out the area. So we could have things like that, but I don't know if Braxton's still got a case for that. Uh, for don't, don't, don't think one item, think uh, what uh, what we can uh, bring them uh, that yeah, is I valuable know. and uh, is uh, something that would fill our cargo hold. I mean, if you wanted to have um, a multitude of things where it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, that crate over there has uh, uh, individually pat wrapped uh, spy glasses. Here, let me show you a sample, you know, and Hell you pull yeah, out a yeah. case with just one in it. You know, that could work. And then you say, and then this other case has uh, uh, silk dresses. Here, let me show you a sample. And you pull, you know, so again, you can you can do a mix and match as well, but you kind mm -hmm. of just need to decide on what you want. And yeah, then figure out if you're going to should... buy the stuff, borrow it from the elves, or what? I think we should just borrow some stuff from the elves. Uh, and if we want to buy stuff, we'll buy it when we come back. Mm -hmm. Because we, when we pick this guy up, we're going to bring him back to the elves. Um, we're not going to uh, go straight back to our own sphere. Um, if we were going to buy weapons for ourselves, it would make sense to buy them now. Um, but if we if we want to buy anything else, it makes sense to buy afterwards. Um, so yeah, I mean, we might want to ask at some point: Are there any weapons or potions or anything like that that we want to get? But that wouldn't be for the cargo, I don't think. Yeah, that's more of a gear for us. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think really we're mostly sort of like we're going to push off, but it, we'd probably want to check to see if there's any equipment we want to get. Yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely going to be time for you to like think of, you know, like if you want to... Um get personal supplies, like to actually like get either supplies for the ship yeah. that that are gonna be things that you actually use and purchase. Uh but like I just want you guys to figure out what you're gonna carry as a real or fake I think, cargo. I think I think we would uh, should get uh, a few boxes of uh, some luxury goods and then uh, basically 
some fake cargo that uh, uh, we can co- claim that, uh, yeah, these 10 boxes all contain these uh, fine silken, uh, silken cloaks. And uh, have few a few silken cloaks that we can provide as an example. If we do odds and sods and everything is different, um, then it'll make it a lot easier for that sort of thing. Yeah, just a few, few high valuable uh, types of goods. Like extremely fancy clothes. It tends to be outside of my wheelhouse, so if I'm the one doing this, I tend to specialize in jewelry and art pieces and stuff. Okay. Well, I mean, again, like if you're just getting uh, some valuable stuff, like you can, you can just go to the elves and say, like, hey, can can we mm-hmm. borrow some uh, like bolts of silk cloth? We'll we'll bring them back. Yeah. Yeah. Have a receipt. Blah blah blah. Can we borrow a case of arquebuses? Can we borrow some a uh, barrel of smoke powder? Can we borrow uh, some glassware? You know, like yeah. The only thing that, that like then. if if you're gonna return it, the only thing that they're not going to lend you is stuff that's gonna be bad by the time you're you're done, or you yeah. know something like that. And anything else, uh, they'll just make you pay for if it gets destroyed. Like if you get into a fight and. Uh, Ship catches on fire, or something like that. You know, and burns the silk or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. if you like, and and if you borrowed uh, uh, smoke powder and decided to actually use it, um, then you just pay for what you use or something like that. So, you guys just need to decide. I say we borrow some smoke powder. If we get in trouble and we need to use it. Um, and some other stuff as well. We don't want to have too much smoke powder because our ship will explode. Um, but we should just borrow some random stuff like that. I don't care what it is. Let's have a nice big long inventory that if someone stops us, we go through and we've got like 72 different items or something. Well, I don't know how much room we got on the uh, ship. But yeah, I don't care about the individual things. Yeah, it's a fairly small ship, which it also lends itself to like smaller more valuable things like uh, yeah. uh crate like a uh, uh, crates of wheel locker arquebuses um barrels of smoke powder which tend to be fairly small yeah. they're not they're not like the big giant water barrels um, um silk cloth uh magic weapons as you mentioned stuff like that so but you guys need to pick <laughs> left all um rocks mm-hmm. uh rock stones that are uh, Possibly things that you can turn into gems. It, would you be able to bluff your way with stuff like that? I, I, I'm a stone I, carver. I, yeah, I, I don't I can... particularly care what we take, to be honest. Um, right, but if you don't particularly care, then just decide on something. Yeah. And then, it, like... It doesn't help. If you don't care, that's one thing. But if you can't choose it because you don't care, then you're in a problem. You're in a pickle. Well, I'd already said some weapons that we could use if we got into a situation, and you said they weren't worth, they wouldn't be worth anything. Uh, not that many of us can exemplify use uh, wheelocks or other ar- weapons. Yeah, well, I meant ship-to-ship weapons. Right. Well, um, but you were talking about ammo. Yeah. And that's not valuable. I, 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 also, know, I know. So that's also, that's all I was also, pointing also, out. Also, yeah. to use ship-to-ship weapons, we would have to have them uh, placed in the where we needed them, and uh, then they would not be there for uh, selling. I know. I know. Right, tea, spices, uh, art deco, gems, jewelry, maybe some glassware, maybe some nice carving stoneware. Maybe the odd piece of furniture here or there. Basically, a mi- a mixture of stuff, but it's generally not bulky. It's high value. Okay, sounds good. So it's going to be a mixed assortment, but it's like we're the type of merchants that sell to like a a particular noble, like rather than the general market, I guess. 
Mm -hmm. clientele or something i don't know maybe we'll have to do some uh well i don't know i'm going more down the rabbit hole with this idea let's just say that we take uh, a few boxes of uh, a silk cloth and a uh, few boxes of uh, fine glassware to fill our cargo hold okay and that's that. Okay, so you're going to borrow some uh, bolts of silk cloth and some uh, glassware and then use the illusions to make other things appear to be that same thing kind of thing? Yeah. Any objections? Not really. Not really? Okay. See, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> now, uh, to be clear, you're going to ask the elves to borrow this stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so you go to the elves and uh, you ask them um, that uh, you're going to set up some uh, crates with illusions so that it, it looks like they're, it's more of the same. And you'd like some uh, various bolts of claw of uh, silk and some fine glassware. And they tell you that it'll take a few days to uh, get that ar arranged for you. Um, mm hmm but they will uh, bring it to your vessel. Uh, okay. And basically, so that they'll they will supply you with um, a sample case of each, and then a single crate of each, just in case it's it's like okay, the the, the sample's nice. Now check. Now let let us look inside a crate, kind of thing, just to make sure you're not bluffing, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so you'll get a sample case. case uh, case of each and a crate um and uh let's see so the um price that if anything happens to these the uh let's see can this be wrote in some I'm, I'm, yeah, I can I'm, chat. I'm thinking it out. I'll, I'll give it to you. We're we're going. We're about ready to go on the break, but I'm gonna give it to you. Uh, I'm just uh, thinking about it for a second. Um, so the sample case has uh, fewer items because um, it's like for 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 show of of what the the various qualities are. Um, so we're gonna go with uh, 750 gold pieces for the glass and 1,000 for the silk. Um, that's for the sample case. And then the crates themselves, um, I'm looking at, uh, let's go with uh, 10. Uh, 7,500 for the glass. You do not need to deduct this now. This is only if uh, something happens to this stuff and you can't return it. Uh, and 10,000 gold for the uh, silk, for the, the crate of each. All right, I'll, I'll write it in for you uh, just so you guys can make a note in case something happens. Um, okay, thank you. But that's going to be the, you know, like, you know, you have to, the, they, they give yeah. you a receipt, you have to sign for it, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and if anything happens to it, uh, that is what you're on the hook for. Does yeah. that sound good to you guys? Yeah. That mm -hmm. sounds great. The other thing, yeah. Brax, Brax is going to ask information on and, and again, I don't need to nickel and dime it, but he's going to ask on what is sold on this planet that is worth money elsewhere so that we're saying we're selling this stuff and we're going to buy this stuff. Um, so you're you're going to be, the cover is that you're going to the Talon Grand Empire, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, the most valuable thing that they have is Elven Slaves. Uh, yeah. The, Which nobody else wants me to buy. <laughs> the other <laughs> uh, that is a that that that's an idea that I'll get you thrown into the brig by your own crew. Yeah, you don't really have a whole lot of space on your ship for uh, that anyway. Um, yeah. they do uh, manufacture like even though uh, selling arquebuses and wheel lock pistols is a good business, like yeah. selling it there, it's also good business buying it there. Right. Um, and taking it to other planets that 
don't make it themselves. Uh, so yeah. it, a lot of it depends on the the quality. And like, um, basically, there there are people who make some for you know, like they they make X amount for the uh, uh, the Empire purchasing, and then Y amount that they sell themselves, kind of thing. So that can be good. Um, it's a very large uh, empire, so if you want to say that, uh, uh, like, any of the standard stuff, like local spices, local wines, mm. uh, that mm. works. Um, like, you're getting off-world glasswork. They make their own glasswork and their their own ceramics, which has different styles and artistic uh, appearances. Yeah. So you could be selling okay. glasswork and buying more glasswork <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, just general valuable stuff like gems and uh, um, ore and metal and uh, things like that. Okay, that sounds good. So just just come up with a, a decision on on exactly uh, you know what you want. All right, it is about time for us to uh, take a break. So uh, when we come back uh, in about ten minutes. Um, the uh, party uh, will have an opportunity to uh, do any remaining stuff that they want, uh, and if they want to uh, spend some extra downtime on uh, the planet of Linathar itself, um, some of your crew might be uh, interested in uh, some shore leave and stuff like that, and uh, you got to wait a few days for the elves to get you your, your stuff. Uh, you'll also want to purchase some like empty crates and, and stuff mm. that matches that, these things, just to make it easier. Um, but that'll be a, a fairly nominal uh, fee. But we will be back in about 10 minutes, everyone. So, see you shortly. See you then. See you soon.